And welcome back to the Kenny and JT Show here on News Talk 1480 WHBC. Thanks for being with us. And uh, right now, if you're listening to us on radio and uh, you're at home or near a computer, go to Facebook Live because you can watch our interview right now as we go to Goodyear, Arizona, where, of course, the year we're not there because of this damn pandemic. It's 80 wonderful degrees in Goodyear, Arizona. And joining us right now from Goodyear is one of the Radio voices of your Indians, Jim Rosenhouse. How are you, Rosie? I'm doing well, Kenny. JT, good to see you. I, I know um, people are probably saying, well, it's always that, but I know you sat out on that porch and uh, had to bundle up a little bit, and especially you know, early in the spring training. So, yeah, it's been a little bit warmer so far. Well, good for you. And when did you get down there, Rosie? Got down on Monday and uh, had a chance to – pretty much do the, the Zoom interviews and, and things like that, that we've kind of all grown accustomed to. Uh, but it seems like everything's going off as intended uh, at the camp. I mean, Shane Bieber was a day or two late because he had a positive test, but he's already thrown a live batting practice session and he's right back in the swing of things. So uh, it seems like things are going well. Rosie, as Kenny mentioned, thank you for having us out the last few years. And we understand, you know, the hardships that go along with the pandemic and not being able to be there this year. What are things like at the facility? You know, we've seen Kenny, what hundreds of kids going in and out of the facility. You guys put up a beautiful dormitory right across the street. What's that like right now? You know what, JT, I'm, I'm not really sure because I'm not in the bubble. Um, so we, me and Tom do not have access to the complex, which is about a quarter mile away from the ballpark. Um, part of that is because we have the ability to do the games at the parks this spring, which is nice. Mm -hmm. uh, but because we're in the press area, exposed to different people at the ballpark, they don't want us bringing potentially something back into the complex where they've done such a great job with this bubble thing. Uh, so I, I don't know. Um, just but talking to players, mm -hmm. um, Zooms and, and Terry Francona, it is different because uh, – Usually there's 60 some odd guys in a main clubhouse area, locker after locker after locker, but there's only about 20 players in that area. And then uh, there's more in a conference room. There's more in the minor league side that there's using the entire facility to spread everyone out as best they can. A lot of their meetings are done in tents outside instead of in offices inside. So they've done everything they possibly could to, to try and, Keep spring training going without any issues. Jim Rosenhouse, our guest here on the Kenny and JT Show. Happy to have him with us from spring training in Goodyear, Arizona. It is underway for the Indians. And Rosie, man, when we uh, got the first couple of days in, it was like Shane Bieber, COVID, uh, Tito, a staph infection, right? So all the bad news is out of the way, right? We're, we're, we're moving forward. We're chugging forward with, with everything Positive news. No injuries since then, and the guys are getting ready for that first game in four days against the Cincinnati Reds on the 28th, right? Yeah, it seems like everything's fine. Uh, Franmil Reyes has a little tweak in his ankle where it's not stopping him from, from taking batting practice, things like that. It just might uh, slow him down in terms of seeing him in the outfield during spring training. They may just limit him to DH most of the time, but we'll see. We'll see how that comes along, but Really, outside of that, it seems like everyone else is okay, and they're, they're trying to get as much stuff, good stuff done as they can. Rosie, help us out with some of the new faces and new places this year. Francisco Lindor, the trade in the offseason. Um, so they're, they've got to fill the shortstop position. They brought back Cesar Hernandez, which is great for second base, but uh, I think 15 outfielders were invited to camp. Uh, with uh, 10 of them having a legit shot to, to win one of those spots. So so give us an idea of some of the new faces in town. And they just signed another outfielder today or acquired one on waivers, I think it might have been, uh, Harold Ramirez, who had been in the Marlins organization a little bit of time in the big league. So so maybe it's 16 now <laughs> for <laughs> outfielders. That's where, um, I mean, you're going to see a lot. But I, I think the name that you're hearing most is Eddie Rosario in terms of the new players. Uh, former Minnesota twin, uh, RBI home run guy. And they need that. They need that desperately offensively. So he'll help the outfield, which 
last year struggled mightily offensively. You didn't get the production that you like to see from a major league outfield from the group that played last year. So uh, that could turn over considerably. Uh, you would have Rosario most likely in left. And then right field could be Josh Naylor from the get-go. Um, there'll be some others in contention for that. And uh, I, I think they'd love to see if Oscar Mercado can can win the center field job and bounce back from a really frustrating second season uh, in the big leagues last year. So so those would be your three prime guys. But uh, as far as other new faces, Andres Jimenez, uh, he's going to give it all he has to try and win that shortstop job. And, and it may be coming down to a competition between him and the other player acquired from the Mets, Ahmed Rosario. So those are just some of the new ones. There, there's a, a slew of relievers that are in camp on the, on the minor league deals, but major league invite, hoping to make a club. So we'll see. Nice job on the graphics there. On that. <laughs> Thank you. I was working on that while we were talking. Multi-talented, yeah. Rosie. Can I take go longer so you can do more graphics? <laughs> Rosie, last year during, I call it the pandemic pause, we come out of spring training, Kenny and I fly back to Canton, and we're hearing these murmurs in the airports, oh, the COVID-19, whatever. Well, lo and behold, here we are a year later. How did the pandemic pause after spring training into the regular season affect that team? Um, you know, I, I think the Indians actually handled it really well. I, um, you know, they look, they 10 games over 500. I think if I've seen the numbers where if you extrapolate it out, to 162 game season, they would have been 93, 94 win ball club. You can't do that because you have the ebbs and flows of the 162. But you know, it's kind of fun. At least take a look at that. But uh, I thought they were well prepared, uh, especially pitching wise. I mean, right right out of the shoot in the when the season got going, most of their starting pitchers were going at least six innings, which was uncommon in the major leagues. So I I, I really thought. Minimal impact as a team, but there were certain players who struggled. I thought Francisco Lindor struggled because of no fans. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big part of his game. Yeah. Uh, Oscar Mercado said the other day, and, and he said, I did a bad job of handling the different conditions that we were in that year. Uh, he didn't blame that on his bad season. He said, you know, I, I did a bad job with that. I should have been better. I should have been. Mentally, mentally or physically, Rosie? Mentally or he physically? Said, he said mentally. Uh, physically, he was fine. He just said mentally. Um, you know, when, you, when you're when you a kid and you dream of the major leagues, you don't dream of of what they played last year. Mm. No 60-game season, all that. And he flat out said, mentally, I let it bother me. And that's on me. It was bad by me, you know, just mentally trying to put whatever it was behind them. And so he really worked on that in the off season, just focused and not letting some of the things bother him but that could very easily bother anybody. Rosie, this team uh, has done well in the regular season in recent years, but the postseason hasn't been as kind to them. I think it's an eight game losing streak. Uh, if you go back over, over the last few years and in the offseason, they get rid of Francisco Lindor, and I think maybe a lot of us were surprised, maybe not by that move, but that Carlos Carrasco was in the deal as well. But yet Chris Antonetti is saying, hey, we still think we can't compete because of Shane Bieber and Jose Ramirez and in the division that, that we are in. Um, is the approach any different this year with Terry Francona, you think, because – I mean, there are a lot of spots up for grabs in, in spring training, and he's going to have to play some young guys, which usually isn't part of Terry's, you know, makeup. He usually has a veteran team. So, how do you think that will affect the way they approach this and try and still get in the playoffs? Well, I mean, he did mention there there may be a little bit more um, teaching and fundamental work, especially in spring training, because of the younger players. Um, but they're, you know, they, despite. Any roster moves that were made in the offseason, they, they truly feel that they have a team that can contend. And um, look, the, the AL Central is a lot better than it was maybe three, four years ago. The Twins are a bear to, to deal with, and, and the White Sox seemingly keep getting better every year. They were really good last year. So the division is, is a lot better than it's been. Uh, the Royals even have made some 
some nice moves during the offseason. I think the Tigers are still a ways away, but they're starting to get it rolling in terms of, of farm system products that are ready for the major leagues that are pretty intriguing. So the division's better, but the Indians feel that that they're they're moving in an okay direction. Now, obviously, you don't want to lose a Francisco Lindor. You're not the same team without him. But with that said, you try and make it up in other areas. Are there, will their shortstop be as good this year as it was last year or in the, in the years prior? No. But Andres Jimenez is, is intriguing, and they're, they're happy to work with him, and they'll hope to make it up in terms of, of offense and things like that in other areas. Could be as good at shortstop as last year because, like we said, Frankie Lindor didn't have a great year. And we all know the names, uh, and, and as fans, it's so hard to say goodbye to the Santanas, the Cookies, the Frankies, even the Brad Hands. But as we look at this team, we know the strength of the team is always going to be starting pitching. What a middle relief, Rosie. What's that? You're breaking up just a bit. But. What about our middle relief pitching? Um, well, that's where you've seen you've seen a lot of veterans um, signed to the minor league deal. So, from the group of Brian Shaw, familiar name, does he have it back? Um, Heath Hembry uh, has had some success over the years with Boston. Blake Parker, really good numbers as recently as last season for the Phillies, and uh, has been a, a closer in the big leagues at different points in his career. There's three veterans that that could come in and make this club and, and could provide some, allow the bullpen to settle down and settle in a little bit if, if there's some youth there. But there's some good young arms too. I mean, look, James Karinchek is, is really exciting. He may get the chance to close this year. Emmanuel Classe, we never saw him last year because of an ED suspension, but he's back, throws 100, and uh, is, is really intriguing. Um, Nick Whitgren's coming off of uh, just a tremendous season. And uh, looks great early. Obviously, everybody does. But uh, really excited to see what he's doing. So, so there's there's arms down there. Um, you know, to get through the season, they're going to need a dozen of them at least. But uh, there's some depth down there that I think it'll work out okay. All right, Rosie. So, how many games are we playing in the regular season this year? What's the total going to be? A one sixty-two, Kenny. They're playing. All right. them. They're playing them all because they were talking about 154, but we're going for 162 at least as of now. What yeah. about playoffs? Is there that extra spot again for the playoffs? As of today, no. It's 10 teams will make the playoffs. Um, but keep an eye on between now and the start of the season, that, the postseason, and also the universal DH. Um, I think both of those – were not decided on until about 24 hours before the start of the shortened season a year ago. So they could still, uh, there's still discussions back and forth and they could decide. And I think Rosie froze up on us right there. <laughs> there he is. There he, oh, there you were. You were Max Hedgeroom there for a second. That took me back a few years to Max Hedgeroom. <laughs> yeah, show us the field out there. That's what we want to see. And if that frees up, freezes up, Rosie, we're fine with that. Look at that beautiful field and everything uh, like that. But so keep an eye on the DH possibly to have in both leagues as well as uh, maybe an extended playoff for this season. What about the rosters? How many guys are on, on the – is there that extra roster spot or two or three? And will there be that taxi squad again this year? 26-man rosters, so one extra player from what we've been accustomed to. Um, I'm not sure about the taxi squad. I know, uh, you know, it sounds like AAA baseball will be back. Uh, maybe it starts a little bit later, but but not much. I mean, I, I know they have schedules out, but they're still trying to figure out how it's going to work because they want to get the major leaguers out of here before right. they bring the minor league kids in to start their spring training. So whether that impacts AAA, I, I don't know. Um, there could be alternate states at the start just so that there is that taxi squad, so to speak. Um, some of it's still up in the air. Rosie, one of the other big things concerning the Cleveland Indians is obviously just that, the name. We saw earlier last week that the Washington football team isn't going to announce their new name until 2022. 
any movement on the renaming of the Cleveland baseball team? I, I think there's a, a ton of stuff going on kind of behind the scenes and um, focus groups, gathering information, potential names, that kind of stuff. But um, nothing that's been announced to us. And, and I know that I think there's a hope that, that they could have a new name in time for, for 2022. Um, but I know they want to get it right the first time. Mm -hmm. So if that means taking some extra time, I'm sure that's what will happen. So I wish I could update you more, guys, but I, I just don't, you know, there hasn't been anything released to us even internally yet mm -hmm. on, on um, you know, whether it's closer or, or not close at all, anything like that. We just don't know. Jim Rosenhouse, our guest here on the Kenny and JT Show. If you're listening and you want to watch it live, you can on Facebook, WHBC's Facebook page. We're chatting with Rosie. He's in Goodyear, Arizona. JT's in Canton. I'm in Medina. That's the wave of the pandemic and how we do things these days. That's uh, right. cool, Rosie. That's no. Yeah, that, yeah. Now turn <laughs> yours around. JT, I see some grass. You can play on that. Turn them a little bit. That's, I had to shovel for my dog to get yeah. this. JT, go back and show that. Go ahead. Go back and show that once again. Now, Rosie, turn your uh, computer around and show the, the people at home that are watching. All right, that's no, Canton, Ohio. No, on no the no right, and there it is. We there's have pine here. trees. We have pine trees. They have, they have there's palm, palm trees. trees. Yeah, palm trees and pine trees. That's the hey. difference. Oh, my goodness. Uh, okay, Rosie. Every year when we're down there with you, normally we say, give us a guy to watch out for, right? You and Hammy, when we talk to both you guys. So whether it's a new guy or maybe it's a guy that's been there a while that, hey, they're hoping that this is going to be a breakout year uh, for that individual. Uh, who is Jim Rosenhaus keeping an eye on as you do these games and waiting to see if, if he rises to the occasion this year? You know what? I'm going to go with Josh Naylor. Um, okay. And maybe it's because the last time we saw him, no, the Yankees couldn't get him out in that postseason series. He had a, right. a just a tremendous forty-eight hours, um, and it was exciting. And and you just wonder, man, you know, is, is he scratching the surface there? He's still young. Um, they're pretty excited. He plays the game like his pants are on fire. So there's a lot to like there. Um, so I'm going to keep an eye on him and, and see how he gets ready for the season. I talked to him the other day and, uh, you know, it just sounds like he's in a real good place in terms of how his off season went. And now, you know, he's going through that first full spring with new team. Um, and he's excited about that. All right. I'm going to ask you about a guy that JT and I both like, and we're hoping that this might be his year to break out. And that's the guy they acquired for Jan Gomes in the trade with Washington. And that's Daniel Johnson. What, what do you think the prospects are of Daniel Johnson making this team out of camp this year? Whew, boy, there's a ton of outfielders, so it's going to be hard. Um, I will say if he has a spring this spring like he had last spring, yeah. he'll be in the conversation because he had a really good spring last spring. Um, you know, I wonder if – and, and we, we kind of refer back to Oscar Mercado uh, – you know, a couple of years ago, he had a good spring and they sent him back to AAA and let him settle in, get his regular at-bats, get off to a hot start, and then brought him up when he was hot. And he parlayed that into a great rookie season. Uh, if Johnson, if Daniel Johnson's not an everyday outfielder, I think they're going to do the same with him. Let him go to AAA. Okay. Season last year, let him get playing games again on a regular basis. And, and then if they have a need, bring him up when he's hot. That's that's just my thought on it, that that could happen. I don't think they want to – I don't know if rushing is the right word, but um, they have some veterans in here who might be able to – they might feel better about starting the season with uh, just from the standpoint of a, if they have to sit on the bench for a week, mm -hmm. they can do that because they're veteran guys. And I don't think you want to do that to a rookie. Well, last year you are in a sprint, and it's hard. You want to compare it to other sports, and we talk about young quarterbacks needing more reps. And in this case, I think they need more reps at the big league level. Maybe that's one of the reasons he hasn't been able to break. Do they bring in too many outfielders, Rosie, and make it hard for these guys that every bat could be at bat could be their last? And so if they don't succeed, maybe it's in their mind that they're getting sent back down anyway. Um, I don't think so. You know that. These guys, the, the the coaching staff and, and Tito, 
they have a way of getting everybody their at bats in the spring. They're, they're, it just seems like there's enough at bats to go around, um, and it'll it'll sort itself out. It always does. Um, if if they look at the veterans and say, you know what, they're not going to help us, we yeah. might as well go with the young guy. They'll make the move. Um, so, but it, you know, if, if they have a veteran in here who uh, say just as an example of Billy Hamilton, if if he really looks sharp here in the spring, and they're thinking, you know. A guy with that kind of speed might fit for where we're at at the start of the season. That might be a good fit because of his skill set, and they'll keep him. But if they say, you know, we, we got some fast guys, we don't, nah, you know, we'll move on and 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 give one of our young guys a chance. They they would do that. But that's what the games are for, and and you have close to thirty of them in the spring, and well, and uh, who's those? I guess is it is it normal to bring in fifteen to sixteen outfielders during spring ball? Probably not. <laughs> I think it's just the way it worked out. Um, so we'll, you know, we'll see. I, it'll probably sort itself out fairly quickly, but but they'll be able to get everybody enough playing time. Um, you know, there are some restrictions on on B games and split squad games, more so split squad games. But I think they can play some B games on backfields. Um, they got to be careful with how many they do and all that distancing and everything, but. Um, I, I think they'll have opportunities. All right, Rosie, give us uh, uh, the latest on tickets. You and I have been talking off the air about this. I've got some fans that are uh, diehard Indians fans that are like, all right, we're hearing Mike DeWine saying 30% capacity. That's over 10,000 possible fans at, at an Indians home game. Um, uh, what's the latest on what you're hearing as far as Will that indeed be the case, and when will tickets maybe be available for fans to buy so they can get the hell out of the house uh, and go to uh, a baseball game outside? They're they're still working through it because they had to wait for for the governor's edict on what percentage of fans they could have. So now they they take that number and and see how it fits at Progressive Field from a, a spacing standpoint because you know they give you that number of thirty percent of capacity. But then there's the regulations on how far apart everybody has to be. Are they pod to four, pod to six? So what that number ends up being, don't know yet. They're still working through that. Um, and then you obviously have to reach out to your season ticket holders and make sure that they're squared away. And, and then, you know, you just work through that process to see what's left and how much you can offer, how many tickets you can offer fans on a game by game basis. Um, I think they're trying to do it as soon as they can so people can make plans, but they want to obviously do it in a way where they can welcome as many fans as they can. So it may take a little bit. Um, let's see. What's today? The 24th of February. Right. Should we do an over under? Yes. Go ahead. I'm going to say, you know what? I can't put a date out there. I'll get in trouble with the PR department. But, uh, <laughs> I got to believe sometime, you know, in the first or second week of March, that they may be okay. ready to, to do it. If not sooner. Okay, so uh, on the bottom of the screen there, scrolling across the home opener, April 8th uh, against Kansas City. It's 4 o'clock start uh, for the home opener, and then the actual season opener on the bottom of the screen now, April 1st uh, at the L.A. Angels, 10.05. That's not, no, that's not true. Uh-oh, what's Where'd wrong? What, what's wrong? What, what are opening I, in Detroit. You're We're opening in Detroit. Detroit. What the heck am I looking at here? Look at this here. Look, I'm looking at e I trust at ESPN.com, and they're telling me that's when the – so this is an old schedule. What are you doing, Kenny? Oh, it's my goodness. It's the last time I trust the uh, the gosh darn ESPN.com at the, look at the heck with them. JT, get them off. Move him uh, Slide him over. All right, so when's the opener? I'm going to type it up as you're speaking. Go ahead, Rosie. It's April 1st. Um, okay. We're at, at Detroit, 105 first pitch. Well, at Detroit. Why do you start in a cold weather city when you could have started what I had up there with the LA Angels in a warm weather city? I, I don't. That still drives me now, crazy. Wait, wait a minute. Last year, yeah. And Shane Bieber, Shane Bieber pointed this out to me that we were supposed to open at home against the Tigers, and I think it was was it like March 29th or 30th? It was in March for sure. And that day turned out to be okay. It did. I think it was, okay. I think it was mid fifties. Okay. Because people said, "Boy, you guys had a nice day." And then the rest of April was lousy with rain and that. But 
but opening day would have been okay. It would have been one of the nicest openers. Right. In That's right. right. All right. So April 1st at Detroit season opener. When is the home opener then? So I don't put the wrong graphic. You had that correct. Oh, you I did. Right. Hey, yeah. let me put that one back up there. There oh, we no, go. Wait, 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 no, no, no. That's not right. That's not oh, right. it's not correct. Okay. <laughs> What's the home opener then? That might be the White Sox. Um, the, the, the new what's, the, what's that Monday? Is it April 5th? Uh, let's see. Yeah, Monday the 5th is... It's against uh, the Royals. Okay, so it's Monday the 5th. Yeah. Okay, so this this schedule that ESPN.com, the worldwide leader in sport... Go, the, to, the in, one, why, go to Indians.com. What are you doing uh, with that? Come on. Uh, shame on me for not going to Indians.com. So, uh, <laughs> so April 5th, that Monday is the home opener... Uh, for the Indians uh, at Progressive Field, correct? Hopefully we'll have fans. I yes. Guess. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Hey, Rosie, thanks for doing this today. We really appreciate it. We'll uh, keep up with you maybe another time uh, and you and Hammy throughout spring training. Talk to hopefully some players. We'll see what happens there. Stay safe out there and we'll be listening. We do know this. Let me get one right at least. There we go. First spring training game, Sunday, February 28th against the Cincinnati Reds. You are a graphics that? machine, Kenny, a graphics yeah. machine. It's not always right, but I'm throwing them up there. Gosh darn it. Uh, there you go. Rosie, thanks for coming on with us. Be well, my friend. We'll talk to you again soon. Kenny, JT, good to see you, buddy. All right.